Welcome once again to Anatomy and Physiology at Glen Oak Community College. I'm Dr. Ren Hartung. And we are going to move on with trying to understand what's called excitation contraction coupling. How does a signal from a neuron make it to cause the muscle cell to actually contract? Um, we need to get something out of the way first, and that's called resting potential versus action potential. And I'm going to take a little piece of the board over here and try to explain that. This line represents the cell membrane. And this side is inside the cell. And this side is outside the cell. There is a charge across this membrane. On the inside, it has a negative charge. And on the outside, it has a positive charge. We always measure from the inside, and the inside charge is around 90 millivolts. And that's set up by ions, and we'll talk about how that's set up when we talk about the nervous system. So the outside's positive, the inside's negative. That, again, is resting potential. resting potential. So this is when the muscle is not contracting, the muscle fiber is not contracting, it's just resting, it's waiting for the next impulse to come from the neuron. Now let's talk about action potential. So remember, at resting potential, the inside, of the, the inside of the cell is negative, the outside of the cell is positive. When an action potential happens, part of the membrane gets stimulated to change its charge. The inside becomes positive, the outside becomes negative. This happening at this part of the membrane stimulates the next part of the membrane to go through the same thing. And again, that part of the membrane stimulates the next part of the membrane. Behind this area of depolarization, the membrane returns to its original resting state. So you've got this area of the membrane that's changing its charge dramatically, and that area is moving along the entire muscle fiber. That's what an action potential is. Remember the conductive... Um, when we talked about properties of the muscle cell, it's capable of conduction. It conducts this electrical charge change over the entire surface of the muscle fiber. So let me continue my little charge change. Inside becomes positive, outside negative, and then behind it, everything returns back to the way it was. Again, that is what an action potential is. It's a quick change where the membrane reverses its polarity and then changes it back to normal again. That is action potential. In order to do this properly, I'm going to have to add some more to my drawing. And I'm going to quiz you while I do it. We're, we have sarcolemma here. And this is a, p a part of the sarcolemma that's invaginated and it has this tube running down. Can you remember what those are called? If you said T-tubule or transverse tubule, you're right. I'm going to put on here the charge. Inside the cell's negative, outside positive. The T-tubule has the same situation going on. Inside negative, ins inside of the cell negative, outside of the cell positive. By the way, that resting potential versus action potential, neurons do the same thing. So if you remember that, it'll help you get ahead of things when, you, when we talk about the neuron. An action potential comes down the neuron, and it reaches the axon terminal. When that action potential reaches the axon terminal, 
it stimulates calcium to enter the axon terminal. So I'm going to get rid of my arrows because they're kind of in my way and my labels. So the action potential came down here to the axon terminal. And what that does is it opens up calcium channels. And calcium enters the axonal buton or the axon terminal. When the level of calcium increases inside of the axon terminal, that causes these vesicles that are filled with neurotransmitter to come down here to the, to the membrane and undergo exocytosis and release neurotransmitter into the synaptic cleft. That's one of the things I didn't label earlier, actually, is this area between, between the nerve cell and the muscle cell. It's called the synaptic cleft. That acetylcholine is now in the synaptic cleft and it's going to bind to acetylcholine receptors. Acetylcholine receptors are ion channels. They let ions flow, sodium and potassium especially. That flow of ions causes some positive charge to go towards the membrane over here. And you get the beginning of the action potential. And behind it, of course, we go back to resting. Something I had to come back to add. Um, the acetylcholine binds to the acetylcholine receptor and that initiates the action potential. If no more signals come down from the axon, then the muscle is supposed to stop contracting. But if there's still acetylcholine in the synaptic cleft, the muscle fiber won't stop its contraction. We need to get rid of this acetylcholine. And that's where an enzyme that exists in this area called acetylcholine esterase comes into play. If the axon stops sending signal, then the acetylcholine esterase should break down the acetylcholine that's in here so that we don't continue to keep the uh, acetylcholine receptors open and we don't continue to stimulate the muscle fiber. Nerve gas. Um, there's a nerve gas called serine and the action of this nerve gas is to inhibit acetylcholine esterase. That's the way that it works. If you inhibit acetylcholine esterase, you get a buildup of acetylcholine in the synaptic cleft and you get muscles that don't stop contracting and eventually it affects the muscles of breathing and the person suffocates. So don't forget acetylcholine esterase. The action potential then goes down the T-tubules. So we have an action potential in the T-tubules. Do you remember what comes right up against the T-tubules? And I'll draw it the same color I did before, green. sarcoplasmic reticulum. The action potential reaching the T-tubules stimulates the sarcoplasmic reticulum to release what it stores. And if you recall, what the sarcoplasmic reticulum stores, and I'm showing it coming out now, is calcium ions. And that's excitation contraction coupling. An action potential comes down a motor neuron's axon. It reaches the axon terminal. That stimulates synaptic vesicles filled with acetylcholine to dock with the presynaptic membrane and undergo exocytosis, releasing acetylcholine into the synaptic cleft. The acetylcholine binds to acetylcholine receptors that are within these junctional folds 
The acetylcholine receptors are ion channels and they open and that, let, uh, that lets ions flow in and out of the membrane. That stimulates an action potential. The action potential goes down T-tubules. When the action potential gets to the T-tubules, that stimulates the sarcoplasmic reticulum to release calcium. That's how a motor neuron signals the muscle cell to contract. The next step is, so the calcium comes up, so what? So calcium levels inside of the muscle cell have increased. And that's where the sliding filament theory is going to come in. And that'll be my next video. So thanks again for watching. And if you have any questions or anything, please feel free to contact me. And look for the next video.